Hello, I'm Sevi. Uh, I'm an English teacher at the Foundations course at Abu Dhabi Men's College. I've been working here for four years and I've mainly taught levels one and two courses. My main uh, rationale behind choosing a particular app or uh, a tool would be meeting the, learner ob the learning objectives. Um, I might, for example, uh, use a particular app to practice vocabulary, uh, like, voc like Spelling City, or I might use uh, Audioboo for listening practice, I might use Pages for writing practice. Um, obviously, collaboration uh, and sharing between students is very important too, so I prefer apps like Edmodo, uh, which provide a learning management system where students can collaborate, um, comment on each other's work, um, and also it allows me to share materials with students, to share um, videos, audio files, uh, presentations, I can flip my teaching and share, uh, explain everything, videos, explain grammar points. Um, so, yeah, in addition to meeting learner objectives, um, I would also choose apps that would make students be more interested in the subjects, that would increase motivation and help, ret uh, help the retention of uh, the subject area, the knowledge. First of all, it, helped, it en enabled me and my students to reach um, a, a specific objective through different tools and different apps. So it gives them the chance to personalize their learning and take ownership for their learning. I might set a task, for example, create a video uh, describing your best friend, but it could be up to them to choose the tool. So that they, they've got ownership over their own learning. And using apps like Edmodo allows me to share up-to-date information with students so they have access to information 24 hours, anywhere, anytime. Um, um, students creating videos is a really empowering tool and um, it helps them to create real-life examples and it helps them uh, internalize the subject as well. Also, it's very engaging and students have a chance to collaborate both with their peers and students. Yes, the, the tools that I've chosen were effective. For example, one of the main challenges that I've uh, faced at the beginning was sharing materials because I couldn't find a platform which would enable me to create folders, share them with students, um, and at the same time give uh, feedback to them without having to log out of the uh, app. Um, I know that Google Drive, Google Docs, these were opportunities, uh, Dropbox was another uh, possibility, but I came across an app called eBackpack which proved to be the ultimate solution for me and I thought it was very effective because through eBackpack, I was able to have a shared folder with my students where I could upload materials. Um, it could be anything from iWorks to uh, Microsoft Office. And uh, I could upload photos, videos, sound files. Uh, my students could access them through uh, their eBackpack account. But also, I had a separate folder for each student for their assignments. So whenever the student uploaded their work to the purple folder, which was the assignment folder, uh, it would be a document shared between me and the student only. And I, as soon as I received their work, I had the chance to give feedback on the screen and return the work to students immediately. Um, which was a great uh, function of eBackpack. It is a paid app, uh, but I, I, was, I think it was worth every penny and, and I'm happy to pay for it again next semester. Another app that I really liked was Edmodo. And I use Edmodo mainly to, uh, not to share materials because I was using eBackpack for that, but mainly for collaboration. So students um, could comment on each other's work, 
they could also have access to information. I, I would send them homework reminders and exam reminders. So it was also great for accessing up-to-date information. So those tools, those two specific tools uh, were incredibly effective, yes. I believe I had three major challenges. The first one, as I mentioned before, was sharing materials. E-Backpack was my solution to that. The second one was choosing the right apps because I wasn't sure, I heard the names of various apps, but I wasn't sure which one would work better, which one had iWork support or web dev connection. So it took me quite a while to get my head around it. And the best way to do it is first to consult with uh, the EdTech department. Tarek has been very helpful in that. Uh, and also to search online and see what other people suggest. But obviously the best way is to really download and explore it for yourself. Um, and my third challenge was planning my lessons. When I first started this iPad journey and I sat down to plan my lesson for the first day, and I found myself overwhelmed with the app choices and I was so excited to explore them so I found myself starting with the apps, which apps I wanted to explore and trying to build a lesson around it which didn't work. Uh, then I realized very quickly that I still have to start with my learning objectives, my aims, sub-aims and then choose apps which help me meet those objectives. Yes, um, if we're talking about Edmodo, it was uh, incredibly engaging and most students access Edmodo not only on their iPads but on their phones as well because they had uh, 3G, they didn't have 3G connection on their iPads so they, whenever they wanted to check something they would use it on their phones. They really loved e-backpack as well and they were asking other teachers to use e-backpack so I would say yes, the tools that I use were engaging. Yes, this year, especially with the iPads, I found the motivation level has definitely gone up because uh, for the first time ever, my students came to class equipped with the resources. Before, they would always forget their books, notebooks, um, pencils, but nobody ever forgot their iPad. Uh, which was a really good start to the lesson and they were motivated to use the apps especially the apps to practice vocabulary such as Quizlet and vocabulary uh, spelling city uh, they loved Edmodo they they liked e-backpack and also they liked um, doing listening activities through audio booth so in general yes they've been very motivated Yes, I use media a lot actually. I would use videos uh, for warmers, for example, before starting a reading I might show, if the video is about sharks, I might show a video about sharks. And for low level students I usually try to find videos uh, which are not that long and also which ideally have subtitles so that they can focus on the words. Um, I might also use videos as um, post activities, so after reading they might watch a video and mm, comment on it. I use photos for brainstorming, also I've used Sketch a lot through an app called Sketch. I could use photos like screenshots and give instructions to students. Giving visual aid, visual instructions has been really helpful so they could follow uh, the instructions and if they missed a stage they could always refer to the photo um, and follow. I've used screencasting uh, for flipped classroom teaching. If they missed a class they could watch, for example, if we covered present simple, they could watch a video of present simple at home. Yes, I've also used mind maps uh, for writing. So after like creating a mind map, I could take a photo of it and share with the students so that it would help them to, to, to write their paragraphs and also they have created a lot of mind maps so I have used media a lot.
obviously there should be a clear link between the content and the media and there should be a rationale for using it, uh, whether it is used for, um, for activating schemata before learning, whether it's used for practicing a language. Um, so there should definitely be a clear rationale and clear link. Um, also, the teachers should be aware of the length of the video, especially for lower level learners. And as I mentioned before, using subtitles uh, can be very helpful for lower level students. Uh, yes, also involving students to create media is a very powerful way because uh, they, it's their, their thing, they take ownership uh, in it and it's very motivating for them to create their own material. They become creators of content rather than just consumers and that's one uh, great um, thing that came with iPads.